Welcome to section two of fungi. This is our fungi overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Blastomyces dermatitidis, which you can see right here. This scene will take place on the battlefield, right next to a big blast. Blast sounds like blastomycosis, which should help you remember that this image is all about Blastomyces dermatitidis. These soldiers are all inside of a Humvee, and are part of a rescue team known as the Butterfly Squad. They call themselves this because they're fast and agile, driving around quickly in their Humvee and rescuing people who are injured. You can see that one of the soldiers has a butterfly design on his uniform, indicating that he's part of this fast, agile team known as the Butterfly Squad. In any case, the butterfly is a recurring symbol for the dimorphic fungi, and is here to help you remember that Blastomyces is a dimorphic fungus that is a mold at cold temperatures and a yeast at warm temperatures. Next, notice that we've added a GPS to the Humvee, and it's showing a picture of the central and eastern part of the U.S., because this is where their team is dispatched. This is here to help you remember that Blastomyces is endemic to the central and eastern parts of the United States. Now you can see that we've added a big lake next to the Humvee. They're actually in the Great Lakes area, right next to one of the large lakes, and this is here to help you remember that this fungus is commonly seen in the Great Lakes area. Next, notice that we've shown a soldier in trouble right next to the blast. All of that smoke from the blast is rising into the air and causing him to cough. This is our recurring symbol for pneumonia, and should help you remember that blastomyces can cause pneumonia, as well as flu-like symptoms in immunocompetent individuals. This guy was holding up a white flag and trying to surrender when he was attacked by some enemies. The blast has lit the white flag on fire, and created a burn pattern that resembles the lungs. The lungs on fire should help you remember that blastomyces may cause chronic inflammation of the lungs, resulting in chronic pneumonia. All right, now let's turn our attention to inside of the Humvee. Notice that we've added this injured soldier in a stretcher that the butterfly rescue team is helping. The stretcher is our symbol for a compromised immune system. He also looks like he's beat up pretty bad with his skin and bones exposed from the blast, which should make you think of skin and bone infections. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that blastomyces can disseminate to the bone and skin in immunocompromised patients. He also has several burns on his other leg with little gray and black spots that resemble Veruca skin lesions. Verruca are warty-like lesions, so Blastomyces causes Veruca warty-like skin lesions in immunocompromised patients, and this may appear similar to squamous cell carcinoma. This is a nice image showing the general morphology of a Veruca skin lesion. This particular lesion was not due to Blastomyces, but you can see that a Veruca is a raised, roughened skin abnormality. It's probably pretty obvious, but you can see that right here. So this lesion has a similar texture to what may be seen in a patient with a Blastomyces skin infection. This is an image of squamous cell carcinoma on a patient's face. As you can see, both lesions are raised and have a warty-like appearance to them, so they can be confused sometimes. Next, notice that we've shown a big bump or nodule in between the patient's legs on the stretcher. This nodule is here to help you remember that Blastomyces can cause granulomatous nodule formation in immunocompromised patients. This is an image of a granulomatous nodule seen in a patient with Blastomyces dermatitidis. As you can see, the patient has a bolus lesion on top of a nodule right here. Now, if you turn your attention towards the front of the Humvee, you can see that one of the soldiers is holding up two grenades right next to each other. These kind of resemble budding yeast and are here to help you remember that Blastomyces dermatitidis exhibits broad-based budding. When yeast cells divide through budding, they most commonly form a little stalk like this. And then a second yeast will form off of the stalk like this. This is referred to as narrow-based budding. Blastomyces is unique because the second yeast cell won't really be connected by a stalk. It will just maintain a broad connection to the first yeast cell until division occurs. So it will look like this. And this is referred to as broad-based budding. This is an image of broad-based budding by Blastomyces. As you can see, the second smaller yeast cells right here have broad connections to the first yeast cells. All right, now returning to the image mnemonic, you can see that we've added another soldier to the scene with a granny tattoo on his arm. His granny means a lot to him, so much so that he decided to tattoo her on his arm before coming to battle. In any case, this is our symbol for granuloma formation, and is here to help you remember that Blastomyces is associated with granuloma formation. Okay, now let's talk about treatment. If you look at the soldier's arm, you can see that we've added the letter A on a shawl that the grandma is wearing, and this is our symbol for azoles. So for local mild to moderate disease, patients should be treated with azole medications, such as itraconazole. Finally, notice that we've shown a frog on this other soldier's gun. The amphibian is our recurring symbol for amphotericin B, and is here to help you remember that systemic or severe infections should be treated with amphotericin B. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 23-year-old female with a history of HIV presents to the physician due to a red sore on her left arm. 
She states that she first noticed it three days ago, but that it has been getting worse. She also has had a cough for the past several months, but didn't think much of it. She is not compliant with antiretroviral therapy. Physical examination reveals a violet-colored verrucous lesion with irregular borders. A biopsy is obtained and shown below. Which of the following is true regarding the causal organism? A. It may also cause osteomyelitis. B. It is endemic to the southwestern U.S. C. It is transmitted through bat droppings. Or D. Microscopy may also reveal septate hyphae that branch at 45 degree angles. Okay, hopefully from the question stem you notice that this patient has a disseminated blastomyces dermatitidis infection. The chronic cough, or cough for the past several months, is alluding to pulmonary blastomycosis, which is likely around the time that the patient first became infected. Her history of HIV, or compromised immune system, is likely what allowed the infection to disseminate to the skin. So now she's presenting with a disseminated blastomyces skin infection, resulting in the characteristic violet-colored verrucous skin lesion. This, along with the pathological specimen showing broad-based budding, is enough information for us to conclude that the causal organism is blastomyces dermatitidis. Therefore, the correct answer is A. It may also cause osteomyelitis. Recall that the bone sticking out of this guy's leg right here is here to help you remember that blastomyces can disseminate to the bone, resulting in osteomyelitis. B is incorrect because this is describing the geographic location of coccidioidomycosis. While this can disseminate to the bone and skin, it does not exhibit broad-based budding as seen in the picture. So B is incorrect. C is incorrect because this is describing the transmission of histoplasmosis. This is associated with other clinical features such as palatal ulcers, tongue ulcers, and hepatosplenomegaly, but not typically disseminated skin infections. It also would not exhibit broad-based budding, so C is incorrect. Finally, D is incorrect because this is a reference to the morphology of Aspergillus fumigatus. This is associated with pulmonary and hepatic disease and would not exhibit broad-based budding, so D is incorrect. So again, the correct answer is A. It may also cause osteomyelitis. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about blastomyces dermatitidis.